Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. I got a, a joke that it's on a theme that you'll understand I will like an awful lot. When I saw it, I just knew I had to do it. It's about, it's a Star Trek joke. Spock and Captain Kirk were talking on the bridge of the Enterprise, and Spock says, I've managed to accurately determine the weight of a rainbow. Kirk said, oh, do tell, and please don't get too technical with the explanation. And Spock replied, it turns out rainbows are pretty light. Pretty light, okay. I, I think I need to take a vacation. <laughs> you, you get a break from me one week. Um, I hope you all are doing well. Um, we do have uh, some announcements here. Uh, Bible study, uh, we will be meeting not next week, but the week after that. Uh, I will be uh, on vacation, as I have alluded to. It wasn't just something to say. Uh, so, um, and you can hold your applause till later. Um, but the, uh, uh, it'll be on Thursdays at 7, but we will be meeting at Hillman Church for, our, for the next four movies, or the next four uh, episodes in the series, and that'll get us through the end of season two. And it has been really good to see. Uh, like I said in the last service, uh, it is... It, it fills in the, the things that we don't know in, that are in what we call the canon scripture. And they pull some of that, I know, from, from, lit, from historical uh, literature that's of the time. So, uh, but it does a good job of explaining the, the hows and the whys of why certain people said certain things, what was the cultural setting, you know, who people they might just have bumped up against uh, while they were doing other things. Um, it, it just kind of fills in a lot of blanks and kind of makes the story much more personal and, and real uh, in ways that the, the scripture doesn't have all the details for. And, and it, just, it just is interesting to see that reenactment of uh, the life of Jesus and the, the uh, apostles. So um, if you want to come and join us, it'll be on the 20th. It starts uh, at 7 p.m. on Thursdays, uh, but we will be at the Hillman Church. We've, if you wanted to come here, you've missed your opportunity. We've already done four episodes here. So um, after this week, uh, I will be in the office on Fridays. Um, I've been coming on Fridays uh, from 11 to 2. If you want to meet me here, let me know, because sometimes uh, on Fridays I have, uh, I'm down at the depot having lunch with different people, and um, usually it's just Glenn and I that are there, but I don't see Glenn. Is Glenn here this morning? There he is. You're not sitting over there. You, you got you to gotta share the pew this morning, huh? All your people are here. Good. Good for you. I'm glad they're here. So... Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> uh, we are having a conference coming up. If you want to come and join with that, uh, let, let me know. Uh, it does, there is a cost to it, um, but it is going to be uh, valuable information, uh, things that you might want to know for the church. Uh, if you do go, you might be asked to give a small report um, from a perspective other than my own. Um, also, spring cleanup is April 22nd, that's Earth Day, uh, and it'll be from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, I think we might be planning something afterwards, I'm not sure, but game night or movie night, game night, or movie night. so, uh, but that would be afterwards. But it, it, there are some things that we could be doing around here, I know there was a, some branches that have fallen off trees and just general things to clean up from the winter. So um, if you want to be joining that, uh, will we, we have food too? Oh, then I might come. <laughs> okay. 
But anyway, uh, that's that's something that is uh, something to to look forward to. It is it is a time to to kind of talk. I know last time Bob and I had a pretty good conversation while we were raking. We did work while we were out there. It wasn't just us gabbing. So, um, but it's uh, it is a good time as well. Uh, any other announcements? If you have anything for the bulletin next week, let me know. I'm going to get the bulletin done this afternoon. So, um, but that's next week. We're going to have uh, Mark Gillum. Gillum is going to be speaking next week. And uh, if you need to call me or you need to call and talk to the pastor, I will be available. You can still call me while I'm down there. I may not be able to rush up here for for most things but if there's something that is emergency uh, and you need to get a hold of me let me know and uh, we can work out whatever it is that's going on and and if it's important I will come back so that's not a problem so um, but anyway the uh, um, that's the announcements that I have anything else from anybody else I think last week we talked about singing for Pat again this week because today is actually her birthday. Uh, anybody else have a birthday that's here this week that we that isn't listed in the back of the bulletin? Anybody? Okay. Well, let's uh, sing happy birthday to Pat. We did do it last week, but today is actually her birthday, so let's do that. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, can you help me with that? Because my brain is... Oh, yeah. We do have... Uh, Money the when you put money into the uh, box that's here for your birthday or anniversary, it is going to go to Wilson Schools. Uh, we do know that they have need for things. Um, probably won't be anything this year. I don't imagine that's left because we already gave them a pretty big uh, pile of stuff, uh, paper and and cleaning supplies uh, when we were. What was it about a week? Uh, a week and a half ago so but uh, for next year I'm sure they're going to need stuff so and we do have some money in there right now but if you want to give to the school uh, that's what that's going for so uh, you don't have to have a birthday to put money in there I suppose is the, the thing but if you do have a birthday that's that it isn't just going in there and going in the pastor's pocket or, or anybody's pocket. It's, it's going to be there for a purpose. So, anything else? Yes? Just a concern for our friends over at St. Rose. Oh, yeah. Is there any way we can help support them? Mm -hmm. I, I made a couple attempts. I drove over there, saw the damage. The building looks like it's condemned um, or it's at least shut down to the point where they can't use it. Uh, there is the, the yellow do not cross stuff over there. I, I gave somebody my card over there and then I talked to the administrator uh, yesterday and said that we would be as a church willing to help out and whatever. I invited them to come to breakfast this morning but they have the bishop is going to be at their church this morning and uh, he's going to have an Easter service out in the parking lot. They were able to save several important artifacts out of their church and so the bishop is there with them this morning and they said they would love to have come over but uh, you, they have fasting before communion they can't eat before communion so um, and I think they were meeting around 9 30 or 9 o'clock as well so 11 okay I, d I don't really know what their service times are but um, that's we did we did send out an olive branch to them so thank you for saying something about that
If you don't know, uh, uh, what, what's the church called? Yeah, it, if you haven't heard, it burned down. And when I looked in there, there's, there's a pretty large hole in the side of the building where they, uh, and, and the roof is exposed in a couple places too. So uh, it looks like it's something they've got to take care of pretty quickly. So um, we want to have somebody help us out when we need it. We're in need, so we should be that for others as well. And we do have a building that's not being used most of the time. So they said it was on their, their table for consideration. Any other things? Nothing? Yes? Oh, good, good. We had a lot of people there this morning. We had a lot of people. Yeah. Anything else? That wasn't a hand, Ireland, right? No? Okay. All right, well, let's move on then. Um, we do have a birthday for Robert Kelly. We should probably sing for him, too. It's this week, right? He might be listening. Yeah, what? You're here. Well, beam me up. All right. Well, let's sing, let's sing to him. I'm glad I... Yeah? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Oh, I have the 15th, so I thought that was a Saturday. Oh, well, we better change that. We'll get you again. We'll get you again. But see, I won't be here next week, so I won't be able to pick on you at all for your birthday. So, so. Any other birthdays? Any? Okay. Uh, call to worship. Good morning. I am Mickey Strong, and I welcome you and say good morning. I will be leading you in the call to worship, and I will lead um, I will read the light print in the in the <laughs> bulletin or on the on the screen, and you can read the dark print. And for those of you who are able, would you please rise? And you're way ahead of me. We do not live by bread alone. Jesus said, if anyone wants to follow me, praise the Lord. The Lord's name is to be praised. And if the choir could come up.
the Lord is risen today. We'll sing all six verses. Oh, 
kids out there that would like to come forward? Anyone? It's not a requirement, but you can come. How are you guys doing? What do you notice about our cross up there? It's got butterflies on it. Do you think Jesus had butterflies on his cross? Probably not. So why do you think we have butterflies on our cross? Rose from the dead. But what does that have to do with butterflies? Butterflies don't rise from the dead. They they do fly. He he went to heaven. He kind of flew, yeah. Yeah. What do you know about the life of a butterfly? How does a butterfly start? Is it a butterfly? Right, right, exactly. In that, they, they kind of close themselves up into kind of a tomb, right? They kind of, it, it's like a little cave that they go in, like a cocoon. But it's, it's like a little cave. They live in that little cave and they close it up. It, do, did Jesus do that? No. Did he? He did. I mean, he didn't do it himself, but he did go into a, a tomb. He went into like a little cocoon himself. And he came out with a whole new purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So we think of butterflies as a symbol of who Jesus was. So you can thank Kay for that, because that's something she's done for it. Yeah, I'm picking on you, Kay. I saw you. Um, that, that is just a good idea, and I really like that, because it's symbols of Jesus and what he did and what he's going to do. And, and what he did after the cross, because we know he went into the tomb, and then he came out again, right? So that's kind of cool, isn't it? And I, and I put a couple butterflies there, because they kind of escaped, and so I wanted to decorate my podium a little bit. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. Well, let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for these two, and I pray that you be with them, that you bless them, and that... Uh, all the others that are here today, that you bless them as well, but especially these two young ones, dear Lord, and help them in understanding who you are and what that means for us, that we can see you in a new way. I thank you, dear Lord, that you are a God who raised himself from the grave and, and became a new thing for us, something that is helps us to overcome the sins that we have, that even though we are not worthy of that gift, that you have done it, and it is a free gift. We thank you, dear Lord, that you are who you are, and I thank you for these two as well. I pray that you bless them and us in your precious name. Amen. I don't know if you don't have anything. Okay. So you guys are welcome to go back to your chair. So um, have a good day. Testing. Testing. Does that work? Okay. Just letting you know, Karen, I'm doing this again this week. So if you got anything, I'm going to come with you with, a book, with this. Not just picking on you. Anybody have any prayer requests? Don't be afraid. If you don't want me to, to put you on the spot like that, then just talk from your seat. But I kind of like doing this, and I thought I would try it for a while, so... Any prayer requests? Any praises? I have one. One? I'm behind you. We have a praise in our family. Um, our, my nephew, my sister's youngest son's wife, had a kidney transplant this week. And she's doing very well. She was home in like within four days. I, I mean, it's just a miracle. And her brother-in-law gave a kidney 
into a bank. They called it a bank. It was a, a group. Some people need a kidney and some donate, and they don't all match, but they wait until they get a match within that circle. So our son or their her brother-in-laws went to a 60-year-old woman in Austin, Texas, and she received a kidney from someone in North Carolina. So well, good. that's a huge thing. Yeah. And I know they, when she says they put them into a bank, they actually, they don't take them until they're needed. So um, they, they don't uh, just sit around in a freezer somewhere. But uh, it is a, a good thing that they do, and, and people that give them kidney and bone marrow and all of that stuff, it's a, it's a blessing, and truly. So praise God for that. Any other prayer requests or praises? Yes, Robert. Would you like me to come to you? No? Okay. Well, I'm walking that way. I picked on Karen last week, so I'm going to pick on you this week. Thanks, Ralph. You're welcome. I want to thank everybody that chipped in and uh, did the St. Pat's dinner and filled in for me while I had COVID. And all I've been doing is getting sick, going down the state, and getting sick, and going down the state to take care of my dad's trust. Just had to. So just wanted to thank everybody for filling in. In a safe position for you. I know. So you had COVID, huh? Yeah, there. Any other prayer requests out there? Any praises? Thanks, Robert, for letting me pick on you. I always, I, I expect it back. All right, well, let's continue on then. Nobody else? Okay. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you be with us now for those prayer requests, those things that were mentioned this morning, praises and thank yous, and, and we're just so appreciative to you and each other, dear Lord, but mostly to you, dear Lord, for doing what you have done for us and being the God who never stops working on our behalf, dear Lord. I ask that if there is prayer requests that are out there, whether people that don't want to say anything or, or even people online that are listening and can't, can't give their prayer requests, dear Lord, that we ask that you be in those situations. Uh, and if there's unspoken requests, be in those situations as well. I thank you, dear Lord, for all who you are and all that you do for us. I ask that your Holy Spirit comes down and, and work on our hearts and help us to Receive the message that is to be given this morning. In your precious name, amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, 
beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drink, drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of God for the people of God. We all know the story. Jesus comes and dies on the cross, is persecuted by mankind, and three days later, in what we call, symbol, symbolically call this morning, the, risen, the rising of Jesus from the grave. All the misery and the despair that the disciples and Mary, the mother, went through not knowing what is going to happen after Jesus is buried. I like the way Peter describes what he says in, in these words, that he talks about Jesus as being murdered. It gives us perspective on what Peter thought about what was going on that day. To him... It was being murdered. Jesus was taken unrightfully and, and his life was ended. We see it as, in our hindsight, as something that is supposed to have happened and that it was a good thing that happened and we, we put a, a bright light on it. But that day was a dark day for the disciples. Peter Peter's best friend and mentor and confidant was murdered. And he had to suffer the indigna indignation of knowing that he had denied his Christ three times. And to know from Mary's perspective the fact that she, knowing who her son was, but to see him die on the cross had to be an awful experience. But Jesus rose from the, get, from the grave. And we know that Peter said that, that, that God rose Jesus from the, made him come alive again. It was the power of God that did that. And Peter didn't understand about the connection that Jesus had with God. Again, a perspective that we don't have. We think of Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit as all parts of the same thing. But Peter didn't understand that yet. For him, it was a new thing. He heard the words of Jesus, and then it all ended. And then he rose again and started to, to come back. The disciples were probably asking, and now what? What's going to happen now? How can you outdo what you've already done? There were some that weren't sure what was going on during that time after 
Jesus was risen from the grave. Some never figured it out, and some had an inkling of what was going on, and some, like Mary, began to understand what Jesus was all about. But in spite of what people's reactions were, Jesus' job was not done. God's job was not done. Salvation didn't end at the cross. In Luke's second contribution to what we now call the New Testament, the book of Acts, Jesus was there with his disciples and they asked him an important question, one that they still did not fully understand because you could tell by the words they used, they said, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of heaven? The kingdom to Israel, not of heaven, to Israel. Their perspective was still limited and still very human as compared to what God really had intended. And he said to them, it's not for you to know the time or the dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be witnesses to Jerusalem, to Judea, to Samaria, and all the ends of the earth. That was what was in the first chapter of Acts. Jesus said that to his apostles. And that is, in fact, the general outline of what Acts is all about. It's about how the Jewish people became witnesses, first in Jerusalem, then in Judea and Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. And the story that I read to you is part of that. And I want you to realize what an important part of this story that is. And I think you will agree with me by the end of this that this was a tremendous story that doesn't get talked about near enough. It goes on. The last thing it says is it, we are to take the message of Jesus to the ends of the earth. And in my mind, my scientific mind, I'm thinking we're about ready to send people to the moon and to Mars. Where does the ends of the earth end? When we start living on other bodies. And I believe that's going to happen. God's job doesn't end and I don't think ours will either. As we continue to move on to new things and and challenge God in new ways, he is going to continue with his purpose. But when you look at the beginning of Acts all the way up through 10, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis and how this idea of being in Jerusalem and then expanding to Judea and Samaria and then going to the ends of the earth, where this is taking place. Because when you look at chapters 1 through 7, it pretty much is focused just on Jerusalem. The apostles are all there. And as, as with Jesus, they start to conflict with the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And the Sadducees, they, the Pharisees, they start turning up the heat with the disciples, the apostles. And we get to chapter 7, and the apostles are shocked because Stephen is taken to the Sanhedrin. And he is stoned for his words. He's the next one to, to become part of this martyrdom that is for Christianity. And when Stephen, Stephen is stoned, he, his death causes a rupture within Jerusalem. It says in the scriptures that all the Christians, except for the apostles, left Jerusalem. They went to where? Judea and Samaria. The Christians went to Judea and Samaria. What the scriptures say, part two of God's plan. Somewhere along the coast of Samaria, 
Our story today takes place of that. It's the very northernmost city of Samaria. It's a town called Caesarea. We know Caesarea was a Roman town because if you look at the word Caesarea closely, it has the word Caesar in it. So that should tell you somewhat of what it's about. And Herod, back in the day, created and made this town out of the coast to be an honor to the Romans. It wasn't part of any Jewish settlement plan. It wasn't part of anything. But Herod wanted to give this as a tribute to the Romans, to Caesar. And so he named it Caesarea. And in that town were Romans. One of them was Cornelius. And that's where we get our story today, where Peter is talking to a houseful of enemy Romans, Romans who have conquered his people, and there's Peter talking to them. How did this story come about? In order to, to keep Mickey from having to read a much longer story, I'm going to tell you what happens. But prior to what Mickey had read, we know that in the beginning of chapter 10 that Cornelius gets a, a vision from God. Yes, Cornelius, the first time in the Bible's Cornelius, a non-Jewish person gets a vision from God. That should say something about Cornelius and his family. And we know because of the scripture that Cornelius, a Roman, an Italian Roman, was a person who had a heart for God. He knew what Jesus was about, and he knew the stories of Jesus, and he knew what was going on. But he had a vision from God. And what did God tell him? God said, you need to send some people to Joppa because I have a guy there that I want you to meet. He didn't say it that way. But he had plans for Cornelius to meet somebody that was important. And then it jumps to Peter, and Peter is in Joppa, and he says, he has a vision. And he says, I am sending some people that are important that I want you to meet, and you are to follow them. And then the, the story goes that uh, the vision continues, and God has Peter there, and he lays out a table full of food. It wasn't just the average food. It was filled with four-legged animals and birds and fish and things that Paul knew, or Paul, Peter knew, was not clean. And he tells God, he says, God, I can't eat any of this stuff because it's unclean. And God tells him, don't call things unclean that I have cleaned. God is telling him, if I tell you it's okay to eat it, it doesn't matter what your tradition tells you, I have made it okay. This isn't the first time God has done something like this. If we look in the Old Testament, God has told Abraham in a story there that I want you to sacrifice your son in my honor. Abraham had to know that that was not a a thing that God would normally ask. But yet he faithfully went ahead and was preparing a sacrificial altar. And then God in that story prepared an alternate. God was testing Abraham. He didn't want Abraham to truly sacrifice his son. But he did ask him something that was outside of the tradition of his people. And the same with Paul. God was saying if I tell you it's okay, then it's okay. I don't care what your tradition tells you. I'm telling you something different.
when we get to the end of that, we know that it says in the scriptures, God said that three more times to him. That vision came again and again and again. It was God's way of saying, I want you to understand what I'm telling you. And then God said, there's somebody downstairs that you need to follow. And downstairs, sure enough, were some of Cornelius' troops were there, and they were there to get Peter. Not because of some military action, but because God had asked Cornelius to send for Peter. And Peter goes with him. And as he goes to the town of Caesarea, a town that unlike any other town in Samaria, was full of Romans. We know that the countryside of Samaria is a place that's full of Jewish people that have married with Gentiles. That's what makes them the enemy of the Jewish people because they are kind of collaborators. And so they're viewed, the Sumerian country is viewed as enemies. So this is something different. Of all the towns in Samaria to go to, they don't go to just a town of traders. They go into the town of people that conquered their people. So you know Peter is feeling a little weird about what's going on. Something I forgot to mention as I jumped ahead in my story, when Cornelius had his vision, there was something that was interesting that was said about that vision. Something that I can only think of one other time that in the scriptures where they actually did this. It said that Cornelius had a vision, but not just a vision, but that he had it at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. When other time in the Bible do they specify a time for an important event? They talked several times during the time when Jesus was on the cross that something happened at noon and something happened at this time and something happened at that time. So to me, this vision that Cornelius had was big news. It had a specific date. They had a specific time that they knew that that happened, and they wrote that down. That tells me that that was important. So Peter gets there to this man's house, and not only is he there with his family, but he has friends and other soldiers and other Romans from Italy there. It specifies in the scripture that they were Italian people, not Jewish locals, not Jewish Samaritans, but Italians, Gentiles, full-blooded Gentiles. And they were the enemy, more so than even Samarians. And Peter stops at the front door and says, I cannot enter this house because it is unlawful. I cannot enter this house because Gentiles and Jewish people are not allowed to mix in this way. And right away, Peter is reminded that whatever God calls clean, Peter better not call it unclean. So the vision that he had became clear to him. God is telling me that I need to sit down with the enemies. So when Mickey read what she read, that inner, inner exchange between Peter and the Roman hosts that were there, that story, that's the setup for that story. This text from Acts is the reason why Paul goes to the nations. After that, in chapters 11 and on, it's about Paul and what Paul is doing and where he's going. You see, Caesarea is the first outpost in the last part of God's plan of 
taking the word of God to the four corners of the earth. It is because of what happens there that everything else follows. This is why the gospel came to Europe and Asia and to Africa in the first century. If it wasn't for this event, none of the other things would have happened. It's because of this text that you're sitting here this morning learning or hearing about this scripture. If it wasn't for that happening, we wouldn't have been here today. Maybe God would have found another way. But this is a linchpin in what God's plan was. And we know that was a significant thing because something happened for the first time in history was that it's recorded in the Bible that Italian, Roman, conquering people were visited and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And if you want to say amen to that, it's good because if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't have happened to us. It says in the scripture after Peter talked that the Holy Spirit came down on Cornelius and their people just like it did in the upper room. The Holy Spirit came down on the disciples. So this is a big and important event. If it hadn't happened, where would we be today? What happens next? God's plans never end. I think today's message teaches us several things. And these are my own personal musings. One is that when things are at their worst, like when Jesus dying on the cross and then being raised again, that means oftentimes there is a big thing that's going to change. All that grief and suffering has a purpose. The death of Stephen had a purpose in spreading the word. Peter going into the house of an enemy had a purpose. Two, God sometimes asks us things that we know aren't right according to our tradition. But God's plans are greater. Sometimes he asks us to do things that make us feel uncomfortable. It reminds me of a poster I had hanging on my wall back when I was in college. And I've told you this before, but I had a poster of a boat on the water going out of a harbor. And it says a boat in the water is in the harbor is safe. But boats aren't made for just floating around in the harbor. They're made for going out into the sea. That's us. Sometimes we're asked to do things that make us uncomfortable. The third thing, though, and it relates to the second thing, is, is that when God asks us to do something important, he prepares us the way. Peter was sitting there, minding his own business, and he gets a vision. He had no idea what that vision was about, but God was preparing him a way to understand what it is that he had to do next. He didn't just throw Peter into a house of Romans and said, it's all yours, do what you got to do. He said, there is a reason and a purpose for this. And I am going to tell you how and why and what is to be done. The next thing is, and, and I hope it isn't something that I have to belabor on too much, but this plan that God has shows us that he loves us. Not only did he die on the cross for our sins and was raised again, but you can see in history that he had a plan that he had been working on for a long time. And step by step and, and mile by mile and, and act by act and vision by vision, his plan continues. 
And it continues for our benefit, for our knowledge and understanding and being closer to who God is. I think today's verse also shows us that it's not just a thing that we say that we are part of God's chosen. Peter himself was converted to the idea that Jews were not the only ones that God had a plan for. Because we know that back in chapter 1, Peter and the disciples were saying, when are you going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And here, nine chapters later, Peter is saying, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. God isn't just here for the Jewish people. God still loves the Jewish people, but his plans were so much more than the disciples realized. That God wanted to use, and it says this way back in the Old Testament, that God wanted to use the Israelites to show the world the way to God. And it doesn't matter what they think about it. It's what God wanted. And he let them in on this from the very beginning. He was calling them the chosen people. But now we are the chosen. We are the people that are carrying on that legacy. And you can call that legacy a spiritual family that you can trace its spiritual DNA back to the time of Peter and the time of Paul and back to Jesus. That's an a amazing thing. That God has got this deep rooted plan that he keeps pushing it forward step by step. And yes, even if we end up having people living on Mars and Moon and, and wherever else, that plan will continue to go, continue to move on to all have a chance to know who Christ is. I think one last lesson that God has for us in this message is that God is the God of the deep plan that he sent a Jewish disciple to bring Romans to the table of God. I think that he wanted us to open our eyes to who God loves. And it wasn't just a few people. That God, as Peter says, doesn't show favoritism. He loves everyone. Whatever you're thinking today, God has got a bigger plan. We're no different than the disciples. Our understanding is a human understanding. God's plans are bigger, mightier. And we need to spend time in thinking about getting outside of our own thinking and to struggle with those thoughts of, of what God is trying to tell us and not just focus on scripture that tells us stuff that we want to read. But to understand that God, like Peter, had a limited understanding. God wanted him to see the bigger picture. And he wants us to see the bigger picture, too. We should always be striving. We should always be looking. We should always be expanding what we know of who God is. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, I thank you for all that you are. I thank you that you are the God that is part of that deep plan, that you are the creator and the originator of the deep plan. And that any theory that goes out there, the only one that counts is the one that you have. And I'm so thankful, dear Lord, that that plan includes me includes each person here, no matter how old or how young. I thank you, dear Lord, that you have me in mind and that you open our hearts to that new plan. 
Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you. Amen. stand. Praise God from whom all blessings Lord. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heaven. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you do, for your Son who died and was raised three days later, a gift so great that we can never, ever truly equate ourselves to that, no matter how hard we try, no matter how hard, how much we give. It is a gift that is unrepayable. But I thank you, dear Lord, that you have given us this opportunity to give offering to you, to show our appreciation to you and to worship you in ways that we can show our love. I thank you, dear Lord, that you use, that you use this, get these gifts and bless them in a way that will bring your kingdom and the next steps to reaching the four corners of the earth. In your name, amen. Now if you turn to page, make sure I get it right this time, 504. So I'll cherish the old 
old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Old rugged cross So divine A wondrous beauty I see for it was on So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling Thank you for the message this morning and that encouragement that we are part of your plan and that you have thought out your plan deeply. I pray that you be with each person here today and, and the, the activities that we have, that you bless each child and each person that's involved with everything, meal, eggs. We do it for your glory. And we are thankful for your glory. I pray that you be with us and keep us until we're able to meet again. Amen. Amen.